I can hear you I'm now. I'm doing well. How are you doing? Um, very well. Thank you. It's good, good to be with everybody at the end of the day. Tell me, tell me what you're calling about. Well, um, I had a question regarding a sibling, my younger sister. And, uh, and how, how old are more... each of you and what's the age difference? I'm 36. She's 31. Okay. Five, Five year years age difference. difference. Mm -hmm. All right. And so over the last like two or three years, I've kind of removed myself from her life a little bit more and more. Uh, is she local she to you? Has, she is the only family I have local to me, yes. Okay. She so, lives about so, 10 minutes away from me. And both of you grew up where you live now? No, we both grew up in LA and then we moved to Santa Barbara. Oh, okay. And did you move together or separately and just happenstance you ended up in the same place or did you move together and then there's been a break? I moved here first for um, undergrad and then she moved here five years later for undergrad when I moved back here for grad school. Okay. So you had left and you came back? Yes, I left for five or six years and then I came back. Okay, so you guys have had a sister breakup. So what what's the question? Well, I was concerned at the time when I started separating myself from her that uh, boundaries were being used as a way to control. And I had brought this up uh, to her attention because she was doing some things that I found to be very hypocritical. And yeah. um, other than now, I'm at a point where I'm thinking other than removing myself from essentially her life, I've seen her twice this year. Uh, I'm wondering if there is something I can do to kind of talk to her about it again and, and you know, hope that there's been, the time has uh, given maybe. us some space what, what was, to how is she how is she controlling you what was she doing that was controlling well i'll give an example um because I, it, so, the funny thing so, the funny thing about that are boundaries are the opposite of controlling someone <laughs> that's what's so interesting yeah. <laughs> about this you know yeah nothing could be less controlling than to have clear boundaries. Well, i'm not really sure what to call this then <laughs> what a what is um no i'm she, not sure you, what to call this then Okay, what, what did she do? To, just tell us what she did. So here's an example. Um, on my 30th birthday, I wanted to get together with friends and have a small gathering at the park, just a little barbecue with four or five friends. And she told me she wanted to take me out to lunch, just the two of us. And so asked me not to invite any friends, just the two of us. And, um, and then when I showed up, she was there with her boyfriend. And I felt really much like a third wheel. And I had asked her, I thought you said it was going to be just the two of us. And she said, well, it's his day off and I couldn't leave him alone. So okay. something and, like and that word. And, and this so happens you, very often. You had skipped, you had foregone the party you wanted to do this with her? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So I don't know. I wouldn't call that a boundary. She just did. She... <laughs> He just did a, I guess, a crummy thing. I mean, if she, I don't, it, did she probably, she says just the two of us, and then she brought somebody. It seems like a, you know, a breach in the, in the contract there. So this happens very often, though, where she sets the terms of the contract, and I agree to them, and then okay. she breaks them, but doesn't tell me about it until it's happening. Okay, so and that's why um, I separated myself. And and that's why you called it controlling. I I can see what you're saying. So she wants to stay in control of how it's how what really happens, but she does it manipulatively and not straightforwardly, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and so you have gone to sister and say, you know what, I want to talk to you. There's there there are several times, and I'll give you a few examples here so you know what I'm talking about, that you'll tell me one thing and then you'll do another, and it leaves me in a funny place. Are you aware that you do that? Mm -hmm. Have you said that to her? I've, I've said that to her. Um, she responds by getting mad, and the last couple of times I brought it up, she stopped talking to me for three or four months. Okay, and stop talking to you, meaning no. So you say that to her, and then she goes off on you. She gets mad. 
Yeah, she tells me to stop talking to her like a therapist, and then she'll just get mad and say, I don't have time for this and hang up or just block me on social media or block my cell phone that's been texting. When oh, she's wow. ready, she'll talk to me, but then she'll come back and it'll be like it never happened. Because if I bring it up again, it'll just well, then repeat that, the process. It's, so she will come back to you? She, after, on her terms. And given the understanding that we pretend it never happened. Well, but that's where you don't agree to those terms. I don't agree to these terms, no. And that's yeah. why I've separated myself. But she's the only yeah. sister that I have. And I'm well, not sure. I wonder if there's something else that I can do that maybe I don't see. Uh, unless you have other people that you are close to that she does this to also. And y'all would all like to go talk to her together in a group or two or three. But but what you're talking about here is giving feedback to somebody that won't accept the feedback. And then what I would do, you know, she does, she's living out a, you know, it's kind of a uh, ambivalent dependency here, right? She wants you, but then she doesn't if you're not going to do it her way. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, you have some choices. It's totally up to you. You can have a relationship with your sister if you do whatever she wants and you don't bring it up. That's the <laughs> choice that she's providing and the one yeah. that I'm, I'm not there so sure go. about, so I, I separated. There you go. Now, what I would do is when she comes, well, there's a couple things you could do. You could preemptively write her a note, you know, send her an email or something and say, so, you know, I hadn't seen you in a while. Um, I was missing you, but last time I saw you, when I, when I told you about, you know, it didn't feel good when you blah, 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 then you got mad at me and went away. Um, so I don't know if, um, if you want to talk about that, if you want to try to get to an understanding of how we can be together and agree to our commitments, I would really be open to that. And I'd love to talk to you about it. If you don't want to do that and you don't want to, you don't want to hang out with me, I understand, you know, have fun, whatever it is you're doing. So, so I think you can address it. If she wants to just come back and say, oh yeah, we can come back, but I'm not going to talk about this and you have to continue on my terms, then that can only happen if you open the door and agree to that and say, you know what, I want to get back together, but I can't until we clear something up. And that's my condition. And that's my condition. I want to be with you. I want to get together, but I can only do it if we address what continues to happen and get to a better understanding. If we can't, I don't want to repeat what we've been doing. And then she gets to choose. And I don't blame her, Dr. Cloud, as much for the pattern that she, I would, I would call it inherited. Um, this is how my mother is. When we were well, wrong, then, then why, then why, are, why, then why aren't you like that? But uh, that's what I was going to say. But I didn't yeah. want to fall into that. It didn't feel good. Bottom line is, it really doesn't feel good that somebody hurts me and I just choose to stop talking to them. So I think so for you a long made a time I accepted things on her terms yeah, but, well, because but, of that pattern, not knowing but, any better. Okay, but but I. I understand you don't want to blame her, but you have to, you have to attribute responsibility to her. That's right. For I don't want to is, blame her, but I do want to hold her accountable. Well, great. Those are, use a different word. I don't care what you call it, but, you know, blaming somebody for what they are doing is not bad blame. That's responsibility. Mm -hmm. Bad blame is when I do something and I attribute responsibility to you. Mm. Like, you made me do this. You, you know, that's, that's toxic blame. But if you come mm -hmm. over and, you know, if you, like, like, come do something crummy to me, you know, you hit me or trip me and break my arm or whatever, and I blame you for my broken arm, that's right. It's your fault. Mm -hmm. That's holding somebody accountable. So I, I think one of the things that you've got to come to grips with 
is if this is ever going to get good, sounds like the pattern in the family might have been that she and your mom were enabled somehow to not ever take responsibility for their victim martyrhood or whatever that dynamic looked like. Mm -hmm. And people would kind of enable that and walk on eggshells and kind of do it their way. And it works as long as it works. Yeah. What you're talking about is you don't want to do that anymore. I don't. Good for you. So it seems like the, the option is that we kind of keep things as they are in which we live our separate lives and very rarely see each other or that, we both that, come to an agreement. And well, both come to an agreement. See, both come to an agreement, right? It takes two people to have a functional relationship. Relationship. <laughs> okay. It takes two. So if you, if, if you're not going to allow her to be accountable for this, then you can't have a functional relationship. You can have the kind of relationship that she wants to define. But if you want a functional one, then, really then, then she's got to take responsibility. So you may be up against a wall of, I will never, or right now, right now, I can't have the kind of relationship I want with my sister because she's not willing. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens to people all the time who have relationships with people in denial. And that's a sad thing. But then there you are. And so I don't want you to blame yourself for that or see that somehow you're failing because you're not doing option number three. Which other, which could be to, you know, if you got, got some people together and y'all could all go talk to her and say, we love you, but we, we, we want you to accept some responsibility here. That's called, you know, kind of the mini intervention. Um, then you don't have, you don't, here, here, here's kind of the problem. You don't have the choice that you want to have. I right? could agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, I feel for that. You uh, you don't have the choice that you want to have. So now that that choice isn't available, which of the two that are available do you want? You want to comply with her, do it her way, mm -hmm. or do you want to stand up and require her to take responsibility, and then risk not having a relationship? Complying, uh, complying with her is kind of what's kept me small throughout the years, and feeling like my voice and my choices, my boundaries don't matter. And that's yeah. the pattern that I've been breaking away from from my family. Good, for good, 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 good. You I'm don't want to go to your grave and look back and say, I wasted my life because my sister's blame had control of me. You don't want to do that. No. So I feel for you, but that's what happens with people in denial. If it's any, um, and she might come around one day, but uh, if it's any consolation, um, Belle, are you are you a person of faith? I am. Yeah, I'm a very well, spiritual person. person of faith. Okay, so you got some good company because God has the same problem you have. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to have a relationship with people. And some of them, some of them want to admit that they're wrong. Some of them won't take responsibility. Some of them don't come to the table and say, okay, I want you to, what do I need to do? You know, and they blow him off. And so what he did was he went out when he got rejected like that, he went out and found some other sisters. And I think that may be a really good thing is for you to, you know, find the sister that you're looking for, maybe in some really, really good friends. Oh, and I have that. It's wonderful. Good for you. I am very, you. very blessed to have wonderful, wonderful sisters. Great. And brothers. We'll live that out and be a good, be a good sister and brother to them. Okay. Got to go to some other callers, thank but you. I thank you for your call. And, you know, um, uh, Bella brings up a great point in her question. And this is a great question for you to ask many of you out there. Um, what is it that I am wanting that's not an available option? Do you know how many people stay stuck 
because they're wanting an option that isn't one that's being offered to them. They want to have a good relationship with a person that's blaming them and in denial and not taking responsibility. And they want to have a relationship with that person where they don't feel resentful and they have a voice. Okay. That's not one of the options that's being afforded you. Okay. You're in a relationship with an addict that you love because they have all these wonderful qualities and you want to have a relationship with all those wonderful qualities and have them be sober. Okay. But that's not an option that's on the table. And so you'd stay stuck wanting that option instead of looking at the other choices and options that are available to you, some of which may provide the impetus and the influence and the, the pressure that they might get sober or that maybe her sister would take responsibility. Like, I, you know, if you write a letter, I really miss you. I long for the times we had. I want to get back together. But here's my, here's the only way I can do it is if you'll own up to this pattern and not do that and agree to that, then I can do it. Or it's very possible that if her sister finally realizes she can't have a relationship with Bella until she says, I'm sorry, and changes, now we've got a whole nother scenario that possibly opens up because the boundary forced it. But if you're feeling stuck, what you might want to ask yourself, is what option am I asking for that's not an available option? Great way to stay stuck. Great way to stay stuck.